actually, you know what I did? I actually posted a video about this. Well, let's get in the game, by the way, Coastline. I had this last week. You know when there's so many six invitational qualifiers that are happening at the same time? I was watching the EU quals, and there were six streams that are live. So I did a multi-stream, and I put everything up on the TV. However, when I turned off the mute button, I didn't realize that I had all six streams running audio at the same time. It was a beautiful cacophony of destruction and many languages. It was fantastic, to say the least, but, you know, and again, you're watching six streams of six different matches, you're like, okay, I gotta take this all in, because there's no way I'm gonna rewatch all of these to prepare for anything in the future, so. Yeah. That's, well, that's, that's gonna happen nowadays. There's some expected bands coming out, some oh, strong operators for this particular maybe. map. The question is, will Mir be the last one, or will we maybe even see a double... Uh, Maestro and Echo or a Valkyrie. There's a few different options here. Or Pulse sometimes if you want to remove sometimes. Oh, Valkyrie. Just there you go. Not super common, but. Yeah, the Pulse does happen. It does eliminate the. Uh, I think we saw this in EU uh, last plating. It allowed. Usually, when you run the Pulse on Coastline, especially if you're going to defend in Hookah, it allows you to play mute close up to the Pulse, which obviously doubles up on the amount of Nitro cells that you have but also the information that a pulse can feed in, especially when you're defending in hookah and billiard. Yeah, it's so much better when he doesn't have to get off the heartbeat sensor. He can just Dude. call out with a ping, and then the C4 comes out. It's more likely to hit if it's in a timely fashion. That's the important thing, right? You gotta, you gotta hit with it, or why bother? We'll see a six pick there from Acid sneak it off onto the Zofia. And we will definitely have a, a dock here as Rampy switches off to the Jaeger. Should be a pretty good operator for him. Although Bandit, I imagine he could play just as well. Either way, though, Jaeger going to be bringing some important utility in protecting against dagger. potentially even the smokes coming in or Zofia's grenades co of lifelines coming in. The window especially being vulnerable to that. And a continuing the streak of bringing more and more Thatcher. It is certainly useful. Yes. Uh, something is somewhat of an underutilized operator for other regions, but I think it mostly comes down to your preference, do you want to just destroy utility outright by using the EMPs, or do you want to combo map control into your strategy, Ten playing an Ash remain. instead of a Thermite, you know, which will allow you to do this sort of destruction, or also an IQ, which would be a pretty handy uh, supplement. Now, you know, keep in mind though, Thatcher does speed things up, and, and speed Indeed. is a problem for a lot of attackers these days. But how does strategy on coastline mostly boil, boil down to? Okay, where you're attacking kitchen, you probably need to take control of penthouse. Yep. So, or VIP. The, you have to have map control, or else it just will not really work. Obviously, there's exceptions, but majority of the cases, 99.99%, .99%, it is not going to work. Clear top down, bottom up, depending on how, where the site is. Huh? And they've got the uh, the roam control here with the jackal to potentially do that. Look for the footprints that he finds right away downstairs. The pulse, Perfect. who's going to be playing down there as well to guard that? Try and help defend upwards as well. One thing I'm wondering is, is Acid bringing uh, breaching charges or not? Yep. He is, which is going to add more destruction to a map that already has a lot of stuff. Also stuff back up if my man dies early. Very true. Which is great, you know, just having more of those. You don't really also, you have the ITA on Jack, so this is like, you've Very got a lot of redundant bomb. floor destruction. Yeah, and of course, this is a map where you don't really need a hard breacher every single round. You can just, you know, you can play full soft breach, and that's completely fine. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a lot of vertical play that could be played both ways on all four of the sites. That's certainly a big component to many of the attacks, regardless. So is, uh, that is making it somewhat different than some other maps to an extent. There's uh, two sets of C4 being played here by Space Station. Odd that um, we didn't know. Well, we are seeing the dock, but I wonder where Bosco actually set up his bulletproof camera. I think there's two positions, either on the desk or by that uh, B site. I think it was set maybe next to the mirror window. Anyways, regardless of that, still something to keep in mind for. I uh, can't see it. Yeah, surprising it's not on the bomb even. Okay, odd. Right, that aside. Smokes are being thrown in, and it is time to push the pulse spotted in the back as well before any nitros can be thrown in. In the face of acid, he'll have to inhale a bit of that smoke, but Rampy's low on health. Chala will not connect the player in the back. Brian is down, but it's just not much that uh, SSG are able to do, thinking they last alive. Try to find it in there. 
Acid is down with the shotgun in hand. Yet he's already watching the angle, and unfortunately for the thinking nade, I'll go down. Just beautifully done by Orglis. Just taking control, utilizing the soft walls to their advantage, but also the smokes. You know, you had you have the advantage when you rush in. The nitro cells could not connect, and I wonder where that um, bulletproof camera was set because it was definitely not relaying information back to the defense space station and also having lost the pulse because of the there was just one specific angle that the Zofia can look through from the window and it was not covered by the smoke that was used wonderfully to take down the pulse I can imagine there's a possibility that the Thatcher could have also played into that if he was able to temporarily disable the bulletproof camera then they would True. not able to see through the smoke because you saw Thatcher for example throwing one EMP into the kitchen and that was the nice thing Attackers they executed a minute bomb. early nearly they, they they were executing around the minute left mark, which is very early for a push to go in. And part of that was due to the fact that they had the Thatcher to help make for Swift to execute because they can use that EMP to clear out a lot of site utility. That makes it more likely that when they push through the smoke, they're not going to be pushing into traps and things like that that are going to be able to slow them down, or even those bulletproof cameras potentially that they may have droned out and called for the Thatcher on. So because of that, it was a very swift, a very fast execute and almost flawless as well. That is uh, definitely something that's been either working or not for Orglis, but definitely something they've been doing more of when they feel like they see an opportunity. No, one thing I want to add to that is the fact that the Maestro Valkyrie bands make it even more complicated for the defense to really run things correctly on this map. And well, they lose cameras. Indeed, and this is why Redeemer is using yokais in the guise of cameras in the hallway, which is usually where you see a Maestro camera or see a Bulletproof camera if you're also bringing the dock alongside the Maestro. But because the Maestro is banned, you don't have that luxury. Same thing for the Valkyrie here. The information game is extremely important, but because there's also no Muter Bandit drone. being played by Space Station, it might allow the Havana of Yeti to go up to the top floor, or at least on the roof, and open up a hole into the bar where he can watch and push away Bosco or any player that's really hidden behind the micro bar next to the hallway and billiards. You just have to be able to land those shots. Yep. We're not, by the way, we're not going to call it Bill, okay, Michael? Just, this is not Bill Nine to stop this guy. Crazy. Definitely getting a little dangerous here, but he is still getting the live pings, and that's going to force Defender off and rotate out of theater. So that is giving some good map control, even if he's not necessarily getting a kill on it. Now they just need to clear Bosco the dock out of uh, Aquarium. And it looks like he has moved out. There's usually, uh, you know, C teams, uh, especially Dark Zero, they'll go for a combo impacting the uh, impacting the castle barricade with the Zofia, and at the same time on the tarp getting kill off of it. Now you see the bulletproof camera in the back should get taken down by the Zofia. They have to clear out any ADSs and should have hit there. There yep. you go. So that's the cleanup that they needed. Still one more Gizmot available, so they can use that to stun any player in the back and go for a plant. They can also potentially stun the yokai if it is hanging in there with the EMP, and that will give them the option of planting without it interfering as Redeemer is pulling it out. You see my man droning as well downstairs in the blue bar, just so they're sure that there's nobody in there. So they don't have to worry about plays from below to stop the diffusion plant. Yeti will go down though to Chala, and oh no, the peak here from Crazy will get shot down by Pos Bosco, but the smokes will deny any extra information for the defenders, and no, they're just running in through the smoke. Brian will have to attack and get shot down. Redeemer with the 2K even running. The Bearing 9 with no optical attachments to have as little recoil as possible, and that is an actual thing. Rampy will get the last one here on the Cool Vibe stairs, and that's all she wrote for the second round. Wow, beautifully done by Space Station. I want to say a ton of mistakes from Orglis, even though they had everything set up well but then couldn't capitalize. It was absolutely down to Bosco's peak. That moment that he peaked and got the down and then the smokes went out, it was, again, they were just trying to fight it at that point and pushing aggressively onto the pool table did not help. I mean, yeah, he might have been able to catch someone behind the bar. Just the timing was wrong. I, I got to imagine the thinking was, if we plant in the usual spot, we'll just get killed from behind it like we always do, like most pe teams do, and just hoping Instead, they would go for the Defenders kills, set things bomb. up, soften it up enough to go for the plant. And that's the problem now. That bomb site has become so hard to attack if you cannot dethrone the players that are hanging out inside Hookah. And, and that is honestly, not just Hookah, but also the one player that was sitting, I, th I believe it was Redeemer, just playing inside the mini bar. of the minibar. And you're like, you have a Habana. There's no bandit. There's no mute. 
and you have a lot of time, maybe just use the roof to your advantage and open up a hole to have that player always worrying about their back. Yeah. I mean, it's possible that if someone was playing across the courtyard, they could shoot those off, but it's like, that's that's literally a long shot. Five yeah. seconds left before insertion. I don't know. It's just, there wasn't enough utilization on the utility and all the just everything that's available for for Orglis. I It was there's nobody contesting into hookah. Oh. I mentioned the fact that some teams like Dark Zero, for example, they'll impact the um, the castle barricade that was on hookah and try to play the tarp, where you can finally kill somebody in the back. None of that was used. I, I think that's such an important play now because mm -hmm. that alone, even if you don't secure a kill, just the pressure to stop them from doing what Bosco did makes such a huge difference. All right, we'll go back to the kitchen. EMP to get chucked into the back. Nope, Brian just moving in. Now what they did before here, Orglis, is use the... Oh! oh, countered. Oh, man, Shala beautifully done. And then pops the mirror window to play from the opposite side. Wonderfully done by Chala. And Legion will get spotted, but uh, unfortunately that might not be a ton of relevant information for Orglis. My man moving up to take control of VIP lounge. As He's trying to maybe shut down a mirror window. It's already destroyed, uh, unfortunately for him. The attacker's bomb diffuser Just continue to drone in. You see the second mirror window is set in attackers the penthouse. So now with the top-down control, definitely not in the hands of Orglis. Time is going to draw away with no manpower for them to use to clear out the top floor before they rush into the kitchen. Yeah, this is kind of like a border defense event where you have the, the mirror window set upstairs as well just to hold that like usual. Yet he's going to double down on what Brian was trying to do. And uh, so far, that's just softening things up. They still haven't hit that minute mark, though. No, Bosco not. trying to fight up by the Lamborghini doorway. There is one player all the way by spawn, and that's Acid. And himself, but the smokes are being thrown in. And what Acid is trying to do is counter the fact that there's extra manpower for Space Station upstairs. Crazy should be able to hit the plane, oh. but no, Chala will find the C4. Bosco taking out Yeti. 5v2 here. Advantage for Space Station as Redeemer will take a lot of damage here. My man diving in, but instantly shot down by the Legion. And Asset, last one in in the main lobby. Should know where he is. The fuser is being watched as we speak by the defense. And you even see Bosco on the floor. Rampy, though. Turn around and hit the shot all the way down into the desk area. Wonderfully done by Space Station on the defense. And all started. Shala in the shot yeah. of the Vector. That really made a difference. And then after that, the smokes just became a play of desperation. I mean, the plant wasn't necessarily a terrible idea. Had it just been the smokes, might have been able to live through it. Very likely you would have got the plant off first. Yep. Still might have died right after. Just but kind it of doesn't matter. You, you, know, up. you got that diffuser yeah. down, and that's all that matters. But that is two of your players' dead guarantee because of the play by Shala earlier, killing Brian. It's just uh, Orglis was maybe a little too predictable on that attack that time, and just great adaptation by SSG to adjust to it meant that the second time around that was more difficult. So you get this is where Orglis need to play a little smarter in terms of attacking from two sides. They need to put pressure on, just like with Hookah. They need to have the pressure before they actually go for the next execute. The first round, oh, it worked great. Absolutely, that was fine because, well, it was the first round. You could get away with things. There was nothing to adjust to just yet. So... Either way, now it's on Orglis to adapt yet again. We'll see if they're able to do so. Because uh, there were some good six picks coming out. Redeemer is back on his Echo. He did play the Legion last round instead. They're going with a double mirror setup. One crouched height, one standing height. And the standing height went on the reinforced wall to be able to peek as necessary as a backup. And then, of course, the usual crouch height one. It's always fun to see that kind of shot out, but uh, they're not bringing anyone in the attack that is likely to be able to do that very efficiently. Yeah, you'd love to have a Zofia in this position, but Acid is going for the IQ in this uh, situation just to deal with any yokais that are indeed in play by Redeemer. And it's odd that a lot of teams, and basically most teams, will not touch Penthouse yeah. until they have a mirror available. And I want to I wanna highlight something that Parker was saying a few days ago when uh, Coastline was in play for EU. Um, you know, he said that... Back in the day, Penthouse was the top Drone played uh, site on this map. That was around Season 7, when Mira could not be banned. Yeah, they didn't have operate bans yet. Yeah. There you go. 
but that changed very quickly. And now it's all the way at the bottom. And on top now is Hookah, which was incidentally the least played site back then. Funny part of that is that actually because of Mira still, yeah. how they're playing. So. so Mira and then, you know, obviously adding Maestro mm -hmm. definitely made things very different. The bulletproof camera really changes the dynamics of this whole set of play style. Ooh, oh, no, what? Unfortunate. That's the wrong one, crazy! He ran in front of it. It's, uh, it's what are you doing? Why are you shooting at the big window? I think, was he going for uh, taking down a mirror window? I think he was just going for taking down his teammate. Well, either way, that is uh, unfortunate. Yeti being down now, they are well, again getting slowed down on this attack, and now it's going to start to be a little more desperate. Those mirror windows are going to stay up. Yeti was trying to destroy the mirror window, the soft one, actually. Yeah. But, but you're questioning what crazy was shooting at. Dropped. Yeah. I think he was trying to cover for his teammate in a sense. Like pre-firing so that the peek out didn't get contested, it was suppressing fire, but just the coordination was completely off. Yeah. Attackers have recovered their diffuser. Ouch. Yes. Yeah. Boss going rampy downstairs, which is fairly logical. You need some players still Attackers to have bottom floor control, as map control in general is an extremely important part of He's, like been, any map, but he's been a good pulse, too, on this map. I'm just just squirming away there, Bosco, just slithering away. Just to move to the <laughs> other side, and it, indeed, it does work out. Forces Brian in, but that's all that they needed. They can just go for the kill here on him. But no, they'll play it very safe. Just trying to draw him in and waste as much time as possible. Yeah, if he can't move safely in, he's got no one droning for him, what is he going to do at that point? He can't really pressure them. And the defenders are really just mostly rotating back. At the very least, Chala even spraying through the floor. He's, in a way, compromising his own window. But at the same time, like that is going to really put pressure on them as well, down below. That window was going to go away anyways. Yeah. My man was trying to destroy it and hit it. And he was very much successful in that. But not Ooh. for the second one. And crazy. There you go. He redeems himself as he gets the kill on Chala. But look at the amount of time left. Smokes are going to come out, thinking they should be able to smoke this off. I'm not sure if he still has any utility, but will get shot down again by Crazy. The Yokai in the back Redeemer will find one kill. And does he have another charge to use? No, it doesn't seem like he does. The AQ should be able to go for the plant here. Is Acid fairly low on health? Bosco will get the kill, but it's only 1v2. And Acid will get pushed by two angles. One bullet should be more than enough to take him out here as he turns his opposite end on the echo he finds too acid no are you kidding me the beautiful angles play by him in the back and just i liked the strategy there though they were going oh. for the distracting fire to coordinate so he couldn't watch one side but oh they my didn't expect God. that flick nobody expects the acid inquisition the acid flicks mr thomas adamshik wonderful like they say no as they say Bardzo dobrze, Polish. Because he is Polish. That's Polish American. It's amazing. We learn so much about these people. It's almost as if we live in the country that speaks the language. Again, almost as if. <laughs> <laughs> so many mis. I'm hologrammed in. I don't know about you. <laughs> so many mis. I mean, you, you are a programmer that lived in California. Technically, still okay, does. Yeah, okay. there you go. So you don't know. <laughs> Wizard of Oz over here. <laughs> Either way, though, that was, uh, I, I liked the way that that was played for the most part on defense, but it's just, the, I, again, it was it was just down to acid playing it well in oh. the end. I mean, you, you even saw, like, the Redeemer just hiding in a little cubby in the hallway, just playing on his, his yokai drone, smartly just stay away from the line of fire. Crazy had a great coverage as well once he moved over to the couch and was just spraying in. They were doing what they needed to do, and it was a, a great attack. That just barely went off of Acid being in the right place. Had he been in a different position, had he gone for a sort of run to escape the room, he would have actually been cut off by Redeemer. And that's the thing is, he made the right play. And he also read into the fact that they were going to try and bait him with shots. Those first set of shots was a distraction. It was a pre-fire, but also a distraction. And he read into that fact. He said, okay, I'm going to get pushed at the same time, both these guys, because, well, that's what they should do, is push me at the same time and just... Didn't work out, but either way, Acid barely saving that round after a team kill and uh, a bit of a mess up the round before with Brian getting killed early. So I, that's got to save some of the psychological tilt factor that Orglis might have been creeping towards. Now you know here your Orglis, you know that you're going to attack the top floor in billiards. You can actually use one of those Xkyros just to take down the castle barricade. That's an okay trade here to take down the one. Well, like you said, they don't necessarily need the Xkyros. Yep. 
And it's not like it's really being used, I have to say. Like, underutilized. Well, you still have three speed with the Type 89, so you're not mm -hmm. in the worst position. But still, maybe you should, you know, yeah. use the Hey, I made that argument about Thermite, and the mark went off, okay? That's giving what him, you're hoping. I'm giving Yeti, he, look, Yeti might have last round had he not got shot in the back of the head. I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying, it's possible. He had good rounds before, but oh, sorry, not this round, okay? You get this round. <laughs> Thanks to Rampy. He saved you, okay? For once, I am right. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm right like 99.99% of the time, but... Except her about that statistic. <laughs> Ooh, Brian, though. Despite being on half health, taking out Bosco, that is the dock down. It's a good early kill. That means one ACOG... Well, the only ACOG off the board. So it means... Uh, can fight some of these long angles a lot better than yeah, a lot of the attackers. It still doesn't remove the fact that there was a bulletproof camera, but it definitely will make things easier later on. And this is why you play the buck, because, you know, top down, bottom up buck is always very, very strong. And this is why, if you're going to roam on this map, try to contest in the oh. in the bars. And Rampy peeking out here from... The castle screen. Yeah. <laughs> the infamous castle screen. <laughs> the Zofia one is pretty... I think cool. there's a ringtone. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, I wake up to that every morning. Right. <laughs> I wonder one of, who's screaming. I fall off of an inch high thing and I'm just making that scream. Alright, crazy firing into the back. It still has two smokes. But Rampy is trying to move in to contest the buck in oh. the back and is still unable to find him as uh, the buck has gone down to the floor. Dicky Nate using his final bit of utility. They'll the trade out here for bottom. one for one. But Redeemer, Rampy, and Thinking Nate are getting a kill each. Shut down Orglis in the fifth round and they all rush in. Yeah, that was right on the edge of the smoke. Was in a great spot. Well, the plus side of that hookah being one for Orglis is it means SSG don't get to play it again because they won it twice. And yep, well, it is the last round. Yeah, so <laughs> I guess there's that. Is definitely to their benefit. Kitchen, something they can win, but have shown they can also lose it. But that was partially due to Brian getting killed early, which was again partially due to them being a little too predictable on it. They need to have a secondary attack strat that they go for here. That was uh, great for the very first uh, round. I, I, I don't know if that really could have worked a second time. I mean, maybe if it had been farther away in terms of them trying something else in the meantime Attackers between those two, but as many bombs as they either can. way, we'll see if they adapt to it this time. Make some different change or er, it's some different place. Actually, it's a bit odd that Orglis have pretty much the same pinks. Are they? No. I don't Orglis know. playing from the same place. Well, they're not going to be in a team house, right? It's Orglis. You say that. So unless they're just like, let's there, all be roommates. Is there something happening that we don't know? Google it. I don't know. It honestly, that's a good thing to point out. It's definitely possible. Yeah, Conspiracy flat. theories abound. Mm. I can't wait to see how these Five discussions go, but we'll see how this round maneuvers in as Attack Space Station. The we'll try to defend to locate a bomb and upstairs in a penthouse yet again. I mean, it's for Kitchen, and it seemed to work out pretty well last time they got stalled out. And that's the thing is they know how it's set up this time. They know what didn't work last time. Orglis know what they need to know to adjust. It's just, are they going to? They've got two good three-speed attackers here in Yeti and Acid to be able to play aggressively once they've got good intel, but they need to be smart about their drone work is what's going to make this happen, is they need to identify and they need to execute on it quickly. And this is where maybe they need to have someone else droning for them occasionally as well, instead of just depending on, of course, he's going to get spotted there. You almost need to kind of watch the camera before you go in with your drone to make sure that you can go in and shoot out the camera before someone sees you. But either way, he's going to do the usual Ash droning for himself. Sees Doc's little bandages on his calves there. Ready for the play on it. And that's what that barricade is for. To help with that. But that also means Doc is probably not able to see that drone. Nope. So he's just going to continue to creep forward and wait for his opportunity to peek it. Hmm. No, oh, yeah, why, unfortunately. Why not pre-fire it? Unfortunately, it reveals his position, which allows Bosco to set up another Obama angle for located. himself. Yet he unable to capitalize on the position he had early on. Crazy, though, will find the kill on Rampy, taking down the Jaeger. Bosco, in the meantime, will fall down, and 
Try to play inside the desk area here. That's still success, though. They, they are taking control of the top floor by pushing exactly. everyone off from both sides. Exactly what they need to do, and that's the windows down just in case they need to potentially counter that later. And now my man can do his thing. Yeah, it's all map control. That's really what you're looking for. <laughs> but denied by C4. That is the one counter yeah. to map control from both. So, that is my man lost, but they can still open the floor as he did right there with the Viper Strike. And they've got three breach charges still from Acid as well if they need to use those. Yeah, and again, this is something that we need to highlight. Um, breaching charges are very, very good. They give you a lot of explosive radius to play with if you if you just want to break down uh, floorboards. So definitely not something to underestimate. Yeti will find one, but rush from behind. It'll be Bosco to take Acid out. Cra crazy as well, taken out by the service entrance. Thinking Nade will finish him off as the plant will go down. Yeti actually finding the kill on Thinking Nade. Bosco and Redeemer still Attackers alive with full health and Diffuser set down by Brian. He's gonna watch it in the kitchen. Yeti watching rotations as well from the service entrance. But in the meantime, Redeemer actually maneuvers around the ash as Yeti has fallen off, trying to play the big window, but that's Brian now in that spot. Bosco will peek. Cannot find the angle. Brian setting himself up in a better position. Even the Ash as well to help out on the opposite end. So just take down any utility here. Used by the defenders. Little time left. This will find the dock. But where is Redeemer? Find the kill on one. Can you find the second? Little time left. But yet he's in. We're unsure of the position of the Ash. Orglis put another round on the board. I like the coordination between Brian and Yeti. What, once Brian was going for the plant, and I'm sure he cal called that out, Yeti went for the opportunity to distract on the delivery entrance, which is the opposite side. That mm -hmm. forces them to pay attention to that because there's the middle of frags going down. And they don't know if there's a push to try and plant on that side as well or to pinch from that side, so they could not watch Brian. Then, again, the teamwork outside, because Yeti didn't give his position away like you mentioned, they didn't necessarily know how they were going to counter it. They did manage to at least get the one kill. Fortunately, just constantly peeking in the timing, not working out for the dock. It just, it was a two-man advantage with the diffuser down, kind of out in the open at that point. It just came down to they were going to have to get lucky with the picks or the timing. Didn't really get lucky with either. But now the attack switches to SSG, and they sneak in the sixth pick there from Defenders the Capital to the Dokubi. Potentially catch them off guard a little bit, and uh, they don't have the Mute Jammer to help protect themselves from that. And I know I mentioned that a few times, but that is something, unlike Lion, that does come into play because it's, you don't have to be standing on it the whole time. You just have to be standing on it when the call comes out. They only get two calls, mm -hmm. and there are very often mute jammers near certain Bomb players that are going to be able to take advantage of that, although not necessarily always roamers, but it is something to keep in mind because then that protects you from the drone and the phone call, potentially. So something that's useful. As it is going to be also bringing the bulletproof camera. I think at this point, if we see a dock, hey, it's pretty much just count on it. That, that's why I was talking well, about it so much. You used to see Doc very consistently for the barbed wire. So Doc is, again, no it, there's always a discussion of why Doc over Rook. Attackers Usually the answer the that I've heard Attackers from multiple teams is, is for the bomb. utility, regardless. So it was the wire before, and now it's the, the camera. And of course, you get your medical device, which as a medical professional, well, paramedical professional myself, I can tell you is not a real thing. Are you sure? I, you know, I don't know what's inside of that. I think it's like morphine or something. I don't know if you if you're up on all the literature. I do have my pharmaceutical guide uh, at home. So you mean your catalog? <laughs> you're one to talk. <laughs> oh, Acid already at half health. He's actually going to use that right away, and that means less for his teammates. He's got to share the care sooner or later. But uh, this is definitely going to keep him alive a little bit longer to clutch it. My man getting punished. Oh, by Bosco He's playing the AQ. Wonderful here. And again, we said that before, we'll say it again. When you use your, um, your your heartbeat sensor, you can get spotted still by the AQ. So you got to worry about that. Bomb located by yeah. attackers. Definitely something we saw as it being an issue uh, previously. And I mean, they did know the IQ was being picked. It, it was the uh, the Dokubi that got six picked onto. It's definitely something you got to be careful of as a pulse. Of course, as a vigil, which we finally get to see a nice highlight of uh, last matchup. Mm -hmm. activate it. They are at least taking this top floor control a little bit slowly, but they're definitely taking it to an extent. They just got to get this player out of here. Acid refuses to budge. Redeemer in the meantime going towards the aquarium, I believe. So it makes a lot of sense. You still need to use those smokes to entry in, but 
There's still the, the pulse downstairs, which is going to use the potential C4 and timing to take down Thinking Nade. Thinking Nade very smartly. He'll go for the drone from the hallway and not from the inside of Aquarium, just so he can evade any potential C4 play. Also, he's not doing it through the doorway, so it's going to be less telltale that he's pushing in. Mm -hmm. However, hitting the barbed wire is going to make it a little obvious, but that gives the uh, opening here for Redeemer to push his way in at some point once he wants to open the door. And there's, the there's there, what you're talking about. That's exactly what I was talking about. Thank you very much for using it here, Space Station. And they'll open up the window in the back as Chala still looking on down. Not sure why Orglis were not using this on their attacking side, but the Ash has a perfect angle by the tarp. You know, they'll find, actually, no, it's the defense that'll get the kill on Thinking Nade, but a quick and smart Nade. Who would have thought? Thinking yeah. Nade. On to Brian. It. He'll take them out. It's a good trade. He'll also drop my man on the floor. The Jaeger rushing out, but right in the greening arms of Rampy. This crazy will go in to pick up my man. The call has come towards Acid, but Chala will finish him off. The fuser should get set here. But there's Nitro Cells to deal with my man. 15 seconds to go to find it here. Do they have info on the Habana? No, there you go. Very smart. The Habana will go for the plant on the pool table, which will allow Five seconds to go. the Habana to be completely safe. And Rampy will find two more. This is coastline. This is Rampy's land. Especially when he's able to play that Ash. Oh man, that's a beautiful one tap there at the end. Oh, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. that's a terror would have made. But planting on the billiard table, it's exactly what you should be doing. You cannot get C forward from below. It's well, very difficult to try and thread the needle through those. I was going to say metal that, bars. that is a pretty common thing to deal with. So it's it's similar to the bed in penthouse. Yeah, where where players, especially pulse players, kind of have to practice that. You have to know how to make that shot hit. And then I think was it was it Meepy that hit that before, if I remember correctly, when he was uh, hitting someone on the pool table from below. You have to you have to really find the correct angle that. And yeah. it's all, it also has to do with the hitbox of the, the C4. Mm -hmm. It's Oh, I ain't saying it's easy. Yeah, it's not I'm easy I'm saying it's all. your job to practice that. Very true. And it's not a consistent thing. Uh, you kind of have to make sure the setup as well from the player that's opening the hole for you for those later C4s is done right. Well, overall, a much better attack, as you mentioned uh, earlier in that round, them opening up the hole in the wall put a lot more pressure on it. Because of that, there was no one to fight on the right, which left them able to fight the front, which is the big deal. I mean, they didn't have to push as much dealing with the tarp side if they could make sure that the mini buy side is clear. And not only that, but have an extra angle further into the site because of the fact that that was clear with the hole through the outside to the courtyard. Definitely something uh, Orglis should learn from because it worked very well against them. Yep. And of course, Rampy doing his thing as well. But they pushed everyone downstairs that wasn't murdered upstairs fairly quickly. It was, uh, that was exactly what they needed to do to go set up for that pool table plant. And we'll see if they're able to defend successfully, though, here in Penthouse. Having failed at Hookah, they can always go back to Hookah later. But switching bomb sites seems like the right call. We'll see, though. So they set up the mirror windows. Rampy trying to decide how he wants to approach this as he gets a little bit of traffic jam going with Redeemer. And unfortunately, both their drones go down. So that is uh, what happens when you kind of follow other people's drones. Double the noise. Double the noise, indeed. All right. Rampy right on the outside. So far, just taking down into default cams. Oh, this just sitting pretty for the beginning. Uh, Space Station know that they're attacking the top floor, so what are they going to do? Take that bottom side. And they have to deal with the kitchen. They have to also deal with the bars. And once those are clear, your attack on the top floor is going to be much, much easier. Attackers have located a bomb. Well, let's see if they're able to actually pull that off as the big deal here, because they've only spent a minute so far, but they've also not only lost some drones, but you can hear them being denied some droning a little bit from the mute jammers. But Crazy gonna open things up on a rampy. That's a good start for the top fragger going down. Really gonna slow things down. You also see the uh, goo mines coming out for windows and things like that, so Bosco can't just jump in. Redeemer finds it on the Yeti. Good trade back, but uh, definitely losing rampy, I would say, was the bigger deal there. See if uh, Redeemer's gonna be the one to go in here. He still has one logic bomb left to call this out, but he's gonna save that for the actual push, potentially. Doesn't really have an opportunity necessarily to uh, push in just yet. Yeah, they would like to clear out this bottom floor first, but they're not even being given the opportunity, which is great for the defense. This is crazy, and my man just trying to move around the map and just at least keeping the mute in there with a the shotgun. And we've seen basically the entirety of last week was just 
highlights of people getting three and four Ks with shotguns, right? So Yeah, it was definitely uh, not the best thing to be up against. It was home alone all over again. Right. Brian, still one more gas canister left in hell. Oh, beautiful shot on T'Challa. He'll shut down the Habana in the back, and my man will connect on the thinking nade. Good spot here for Orglis. As they still have C4s in hand. Two here for Acid and my man. Actually, one will be down, and Brian actually on the floor as well. So, 26 seconds on the clock, and this is equilibrium. Very suddenly, does Redeemer have any calls left? That's the big question. I, got, I heard the phone ring, so oh. I gotta imagine he used it already. Oh, they're gonna try to shut down Acid here, but the C4 Nectro Cell is in hand. He's gonna try to peel it off, and it'll connect. Redeemer is going down. Eight seconds on the clock as Bosco will hit the goo mines. He's gonna have to go for two more kills here at the end. The Habana in the back, and also the Legion supporting right next to her. Not enough time. Defenders will take the round, and Orglis put one on the board. Wonderfully done there with the C4. Unfortunately, um, that was heartbreaking there. I think or a lot of off. us were anticipating a possible tie here after this yep. weekend, and it's it's creeping that direction. Yeah, I'll remind you that this game got pretty darn close. It was seven five, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it couldn't tie in the best of three formats. So. Yep. It will it would have gone to overtime and you know, would have had a best of three overtime as is tradition. We'll also will remind you that at six invitational, none of the matches will be able to tie. Yeah. Which it's is different. Which is nice, obviously. We haven't really seen too many ties anyways in this season so far, thanks to the extra two rounds, but you can't tie. Defenders if you do, you go to elimination attackers. in overtime and you play those three rounds. If I remember correctly, uh, Paris Major had unlimited overtime in the grand final. I believe Six Invitational will have the same thing as well. We kind of have gone through that and agreed that it would make sense for at least the grand final to have that format. It's interesting looking at the scoreline being the same between the two teams, but the amount of kills from SSG far higher. But despite that, it's just the, the objective play from yeah. Org, uh, Org is, is, I mean, superior in that sense. Kills are in the be-all, end-all in yeah. Siege. You saw them yeah, try and sneak in for some of those plants. Some that was that first round as well, but then also that plant, uh, I believe it was the last round Five in Kitchen. Just they're they're able to get the objective down and play that very smartly. Force the positions Stabbers coming out. We'll see, though, how they do on defense here, where, of course, they cannot necessarily do the same thing, but they can still play objective in terms of holding defense, like you saw last round, where they didn't have to get the kill on the Bosco. Although, uh, I'm sure they were trying either way. See, that, that early kill on the Rampy, I think, definitely hampered them a bit that round, for sure. But uh, Redeemer, there was the other top fragger on the team at the moment. He was still alive uh, to an extent towards the very end of that round. Unfortunately, died just before Bosco went for the clutch push. And I got to say that Goomine also hugely hampered his ability to do that in a timely fashion and really kind of cost him. I think you can call him Hampy. Hampy? <laughs> got him. Well, Rampy on their drone in. Did you see the heart-shaped opening in the wall that has been opened? Lots of love, right? That's what it's all about. That's what I thought LOL meant. It still can. You can you can just use it that way. So I mean, you use anchor use... totally different than everyone else, so. Yeah. You can just do it. It's fine. Okay, well. They are going to open up that window, though. Nothing to counter it. So they're just going to be pushed back instead. So this is a good early, I would say early-ish take coming out from SSG. Yeah, Rampy again trying to move in here through the south hallway. So, of course, by the luggage. Two players in the back. I wonder if the Miro is able to. No, they all rushed down. Okay. Um, That's pretty stacked up. Yeah, they're, are they all three of them going to fight in the desk area? All right. Well, I think the idea is you hold this and then also be able to push across the courtyard as needed. Hmm. Crazy would at least fall back on the site. Makes a lot of sense to leave Acid in it. And the Jaeger now has gone to the opposite end by CCTV. Rampy, though, will still find the kill on Acid. And just a uh, close shot because you have such a low bit of um, line of sight yeah. to deal with the player down there in the desk. To find him by the stairs. That low hole being opened across the uh, the wall itself is also why they're playing for that lobby control, to control courtyard and lobby to make sure that hole is used mostly for retake for them rather than for the attackers. Well, my man also moving out of CCTV, checking if there's somebody moving down the stairs. Still Yeti up top by the cool vibe stairs. Grenades thrown in by Thinking Nade. No more left 
two breaching charges still in for Bosco. Wasn't able really to use any of them. It is mostly being used as flank watch in the meantime, as usually IQs really end up being uh, later on in the round once the utility has been used as efficiently as possible. Good timing for the phone call oh. there for the smokes yep. to come out. All right, Chaw's just going to sneak in. Redeemer's going to plant next to him. And are there's nobody there from Orglis to really reply and respond to this. Rampy will get one more kill on him, my man. And so only Crazy and Brian left alive. Well, I think that only Crazy is Bosco walks on in. And yet again, the IQ, beautiful plays there. It's just they had complete advantage. Well, it just came down to here. Here's how the take what they, they took top floor control. They corralled all the defenders into the lobby and the bomb site. They droned. They, they, they took that moment pause, right? Where they droned. They saw the opportunity. They said, trigger the call. As soon as the call went out and everyone was too busy answering their phones, smokes went out. And in that process, they were just too busy to be able to respond to the push coming in. By the time they did, they were so far out and from it. It just, there wasn't much you could do about it at that point to at least stop the plant from being down. And that was SSG. Absolutely playing the objective that time. That was that was what they needed to be doing. That was again that was that momentary pause. Because they took some of the top floor very quickly, it gave them the freedom to have that pause to think about what what can we do right now? Because we haven't been able to find enough kills to be able to turn this into an execute. So advantage to SSG. They're not quite match point yet, but one round away from it. Although we've seen this go back very back and forth. Still a strong possibility of a tie. Rampy though. Already up in the double digits. Bosco one away and Redeemer two away. And still kind of holding pattern almost even across the team for Orgus outside of the one on the bottom for the two. They're going to try a similar setup to what we saw before. They're not moving away from this kitchen site. They realize that they kind of relinquished control of the top floor a bit too easily. Yeah, I mean, I imagine if uh, you can hold that a bit longer, force a bit more time pressure on Orgus. Uh, I mean, a uh, space station that might work a bit better. This I'm not a big fan of. Using both black mirrors on the top floor. Yeah, it, leaves you, it doesn't leave you one for delivery, hmm. which uh, they were already having trouble not watching delivery properly last yep. round. So, I mean, it still is the big problem of Mira is that she can easily have her black eyes, or well, not a black, black mirror, mir black mirrors, completely blinded by the smoke, which is why you bring a dog, right? But. Rampy's bringing the ash as well, and there's always utility to try and destroy those bulletproof cameras that are in play. It, you know, it seems like that maestro ban is starting to work against Orgless. It's definitely the case, yeah. They, they're not able to, to do that outside of the uh, bulletproof camera and the mirror windows. That's kind of the only intel they're getting for the most part. They're not bringing the Echo, and that's the big difference is Redeemer was absolutely playing that Echo as needed. So this is a definitely a case where they're going to have to depend a bit more on good communication between each other to make it work. My man trying to sneak around there, hiding in the little cubbies as well. This is down to how long can they hold this off? They have to deal with the shotgun from below as the grenade being bumped in by Thinking Nade. Brian will take a bit of damage and hear the bit of the audio cue there as um, they, they realize that only a tiny bit was done to the smoke. The ADS is really protecting in here as Still have to deal with the bandit batteries on the other side. Space Station not bringing any, uh, you know, any EMPs or such to use. They'll have to run down with Rampy into the back. And that was that was a very odd way of like moving around just to take control of the bathroom, even though they had already taken down the wall. But still, Brian has been shot down after a long fight. Grenade thrown into the back as it will destroy one set here of the bandit batteries. The shock wire can definitely be used to take them down, but no, my man will fall back and, oh, is that a grenade? No, breaching route right to the face from Rampy. It does allow the attacking side of SSG to move in and try to clear theater ASAP, but they, do. oh no, they're not watching the walkway up the stairs. Bosco though will find two, crazy. A takedown down as he spots the drone of Redeemer. That's all the information that's required. Crazy goes in and he finds it. Bosco goes down. Beautiful coordination there. Just, oh man. Spots the drone, takes it out, and instantly flicks up because you know what? He knows that Space Station want to deal with him in that situation. And that's why Redeemer has that drone right in front. Acid will do damage. At least we'll heal himself back up. Thinking Nade, low on health. Redeemer's still alive and oh, crazy again! Instantly snaps to the head of Redeemer, takes him out, and now it's all thinking Nade. Crazy no Nitro Cell, but 
doesn't matter. He's done the work. He's lifted up to the name in this one, Devin. And what can Thinking Nate do? He's going to ponder his... To go. To, to, you can't save the op in this situation. He sprays through the wall, and there's not much time. Basically, none of it left the defense. Orglis takes the round, and oh, man. The back and forth continues. That was... Well played by Crazy. Yo. I mean, they burned a mi or two minutes and 30 seconds on that top floor. They dedicated a lot more people to it and, and lost more people in it. But the fact that Crazy lived and rotated the hatch back down... And he didn't see thinking they'd do that. And it just honestly, I look in this entire match, and there's a lot of individual plays yeah. that overshadow some of the tactics. I mean, that's kind of what's always going to happen in a way is it, the tactics are only as good as your execution. Yeah, very true. Very true. And there's been a ton of good plays as well on the defense where you're able to play around your opponent's position. I mean, you big highlight from being that mirror. Attackers. Bomb located by yeah. attackers. I mean, again, they're, they're just the utility differences they're bringing, for example. They're not bringing the bandit, or I mean, the, uh, the Thatcher to counter the yep. bandits and things like that. Uh, but then, you know, Orglis aren't bringing the Echo. So it's like, it's, it's very different ways of playing. And because of that, you know, it's like, like you like to say side grades. And, and very true. so you're seeing this back and forth, and that's why you're ending up with this 5 5 scoreline. A lot of that is ending up on individual players like Rampy or Redeemer or yeah. Acid or Crazy. And we mentioned it so many times, you can't really rely on outstanding plays. But in this game, it's just been the driving force of it. Well, it's because when all things are equal, the smallest things, you know, stand out, right? It's just those those small plays that really make the difference then. And then the small plays Attackers become the big ones. Yeah. The Absolutely, that's been the story of this match so far, and this is kind of what we were expecting now. There's definitely a good chance that one of these teams pulls ahead and pulls out the 7-5, but certainly possible we get that 6-6 six, six scoreline we were thinking it was uh, potential because of these teams just seem to be so on par with each other, judging by what we saw this weekend and judging by what we're seeing here now, at least on some maps in particular. All right. Rampy. Now, upstairs, trying to watch and protect Chala, possibly. Uh, the opposite end of the map. They're going to try to tack down in the double bars, if not mistaken. And Drone will come on in, thinking they're trying to take control of Penthouse ASAP, but have to deal with my man. And crazy, crazy, oh. no, going down on the mute. And that's what you wanted to watch. Rampy, unfortunately, can't get the shot. He'll have to put himself in a better spot, but. Ooh. Oh, yet he uses it to his advantage. Baited. Oh, perfectly baited here by the mute. You even have a dock if you didn't want to go all the way up there. They're gonna, they're gonna grab crazy and pick him up 50% health. Space Station lose Rampy, and that's a big part of their firepower. The spearhead has been shut down, and suddenly a bit more blunt. Yeah, I mean only only a minute 15 burned, but that's only a minute 40 left, and they've lost their. Uh, one of the top fraggers and haven't gained a ton of ground to accommodate for that. No, no. So, looking like this could be the lead coming out for Orglis if they can continue to maintain this. They, they need to play a bit more time now, though. They need to play smart and a little bit more mobile because if they get droned out, they could start getting pressured by coordinated attacks because there's still four men left alive and phone calls available, as well as, I imagine, some grenades. But uh, they just got to play that time and slight mobility. Thinking Nade is in the luggage area now. There's, there's some remodeling being done here. You see the Jaeger, oh my man, up in the back. Now, frag grenades can be used here, but you're also afraid of over-utilizing utility and just use losing your frag grenades to the ADSs. And actually, this all allows the Jaeger to sneak away. No, my man is still there. He's still going to try to contest this. And it makes a lot of sense. 40 seconds are on the clock, and you have a time advantage. This is, though, what Thinking Nate's going to try to do. Grenade all the way to the bottom side. Yeah. We're starting to see that become a lot more common. Yeah. Oh. Does that, oh! <laughs> answering or Urglis and Crazy finds Thinking Nade. <laughs> Sir, you got my team in, but I'll take you out as well, neighbor. Yeah, you want to go with an explosion? Here's one back. Either way, this is uh, looking like pretty desperate at 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Say that, perfect timing. Flash, though, into the side of the Rook. Brian, though, will find a kill on Bo No, Chala almost evading the shots there. We'll find one on Crazy, but asked to refrag. One last alive is Redeemer, but not for long. Brian connecting with the shotgun, and Orglis went out round number 11. One more for a win, but also, <laughs> is that the gun floating in the air? All right. It's the new move. This can turn into a tie. 
Very possible. Yep. I mean, I, I don't want to say likely because it's certainly... Uh, Orgla seemed to have kind of gotten a little bit of a groove going the last two rounds. And so far on defense, they're the only one with a streak because it went SSG, then Orglas, then SSG, then Orglas, but then Orglas again. So finally the lead they get here... This is momentum. Sure. And this is down to uh, which team potentially might choke the most, I suppose. Is it the team on match point that can't close it out? Or is it the team that feels like we were so close, but we couldn't quite bring it there? I remember, the best case scenario yeah, here for Space Station is, of course, Kai. And they'll get can. one point out of it. Um, you know, which, in that case... It's demotivating. Yeah, it's demotivating. It'll put them on three points. It'll put Orglis up on four. Um, you know, there's still Dark Zero and Accelerate playing later, which will move things around and shift it up. But, you know, Space Station not really living up to the expectations early on in the season. And remember, things have changed for many teams um, in Season 8 and yeah, possibly here as well. Both these teams have been struggling a little bit. And Orglis, I feel like maybe it seemed like they were going to be struggling a little bit more till this weekend. So if they can pull out the lead win here, maybe it'll make up a little bit for not getting the Invitational qualify. But... Yeah. At the same time, like that'll bump them up the board a bit because a three is a lot more than a, a one in terms of how close some of the leaderboard gets at the end of the season. That'll actually put them above Rogue. That would be a, a pretty impressive for, I think, a team that a lot of people were starting to kind of write off to an extent. Mm -hmm. well, who would have thought reciprocity if uh, you know there's no there's no free wins that are being given away will actually hit that second spot. Everyone's always talking about, you know, EU being so competitive this season. NA's starting to shape up a bit, too, coming into this play day. Very true. Very true. Vasco now sitting up here on the Twitch, missing, I believe he was trying to hit that second level, just driving off the end, but I'll be moving down from the main stairs. So he's going to have to work on his next level droning. True. Literally, next level. But Twitch on the outside. We've seen, again, so many Twitch plays in recent memory, just because the F2 brings a lot. And also, in this case, with the Mira not being banned, what's the easiest counter? Yep. Bring the FAMAS. Well, bring the FAMAS, but also the Twitch, specifically for those drones. Chala will find one on my man. Starting things off very well here for Space Station. Now, Crazy's being called, and they know now he's on the top floor, just holding off by Hookah. They'll have to watch it, but they don't have to push him anytime soon. Definitely the case where they've got a lot of time to work with, and they do have one kill plus the damage on Crazy. Rampy did get slowed down a bit by that goo mine, but attacker. seems to recover just fine in terms of getting up to do his job here. But they've got to start applying pressure, even if it's not leading to kills, just to corral them. Yeti looking all the way down has impacted one wall. To look at the VIP. Acid in the back. Trying to find an angle on the attackers. Ah. Yeti doing damage. Chala is fairly low on health here, but the mirror ones of windows have already been popped. So Chala kind of outlives his usefulness in this situation, at least only in terms of utility. C4 thrown out and will not connect with anyone. Not sure what Asim is trying to do there. Takes a bit of damage. Rampy will find one kill. Gonna need the Knight Diffuser. Yes, he can. He can't find the second kill. Shotgun in hand, but Rampy's close enough. A 5 7 will get a kill. Turn around and find. Oh no, Yeti, how is he still alive? The buck! runs away and crazy can't do anything against the diffuser being planted well, that's rampy taken out as he tries to dive out the window still thinking nade alive with little health and three players in a four space station yeti to take down thinking nade diffuser sit on the side by the big window here as crazy and yeti will rally together and try to corral their way into that diffuser Crazy cannot find the angle on the outside as Defenders Repel up for Chala. I'll find one kill and low on health as a lesion. is looking like a tie and you have to stick this one here. There's not much that you can do. They're just going to die from the hatch here in the bathroom. Or no, even Bosco finding the shot all the way from downtown. And that's it. The tie will come in. Close game. Are we going to start hearing about the whole oh, ties thing all over again?